Boys and girls, coming to the end. Uh, this is lecture 17, I think. And this is kind of maybe the arse end of complex numbers. Um, I want to do a few things, two things. Um, solving complex equations and solving complex inequalities, which in the second one, complex inequalities, some of you, in, especially in electronics, will see later on. When you talk about stability of systems, you will be talking about these inequalities. And I just want to show you how to do them. They're actually pretty straightforward. There's a, there's a, there's a recipe that you follow. But the first thing, the complex equations one is maybe just a maths thing that I kind of think is amazing or just fascinating, but nobody else does. So this is where you feel terribly sorry for me because I find this stuff really interesting, but I don't think anybody else does. And that makes me <laughs> very lonely and depressed because um, nobody likes this. Okay, but I think there's something very profound here that I, I, I don't know why that I like this, but I do. And it's basically, just, and we're going to solve very simple, simple equations, just very simple equations. Okay, so um, let Z be a complex number. And we're looking, we're going to look at complex equations. So we're going to be, we're not going to look even look at very any very general equations here. We're just going to look at very simple equations. And they're all always, we're the ones we're going to be looking at because it brings out the the um, complexity or, or the intricacy of what's going on and the actual beauty, dare I say, of what's going on. It's a very, very simple idea. So we're going to be looking, Z is a complex number, is, is a variable, and we've got Z to the power of N is equal to A. Now, A is a given complex number. And uh, so you want to find out what Z is. You know, what are the solutions to this equation? How many values for Z are there such that Z to the power of N is equal to A? And the amazing thing about complex numbers is that in, if you have a complex equation like this, the number of solutions you get to the, com to the complex equation is the highest power of Z. So in this case, we've only got one power of Z. So if you've got Z to the power of N equal to A, then there are n solutions to this equation. Okay, that's and that's that, that's 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 the idea. And I want to contrast that with the real number system, where that's not always the case. All right. So let me just look at we're going to look at very simple cases. Let me look at the case where it's called the linear case. Now this is trivial. It's called the linear case. So you've got z is equal to a. All right. So um, z is equal to z is equal to a. There's no, there's no, that, 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 that's what it is. Whatever, it is. whatever it is, there's one solution here always, and it's z equal to a. So this is a trivial case. You could make it a little bit um, more non-trivial, but still very straightforward by asking something like i z is equal to five. And the question is, what is Z. Okay, so that is what is Z. So, so we're kind of generalizing it. You can, you can, because if you look at something like this, you can rewrite it in this form. So, what you can do here to get, you want to, you've got i z is equal to a is equal to five. This is a linear equation because z is to the power of one. Whenever you've got something, whenever you've got a variable to the power of one, it's called linear. That's the, the terminology. Um, so, i z is equal to five is um, what is Z. And so you can bring I over to the other side. So therefore, can I just do it over here? Z is equal to five over I. Okay, and that's it. Now you could leave it like that, but we don't like that in, in complex numbers that we don't like having an I below the line. You know, we don't. So what you could do here is you can multiply above and below by I. Why not? Because you're doing the same thing. And below the line, then you've got I squared, which is minus one. And above the line, you get five I. So you get mine, Z is equal to minus five I. And there's only one solution though. That's the, that, that's the key, because you've, the highest power of Z in this case is one. It's a linear equation, and that terminology, linear guys, you will hear throughout your engineering studies. You may wonder what it what it means, and all it means is that the highest power of the variable is one. Okay, that's all it means. Okay, so you got I Z equal five. That, that, so that's the linear case. It's kind of trivial. In this case, it's very very trivial. You know, if I say Z is equal to three plus two i, what's z, it's z. But you can make it a, non, a little bit non-trivial by, by examples like this, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. It's very, very straightforward. 
Things get a little bit more complex, uh, complicated rather than complex, haha, when you talk when you've got a quadratic equation. So let's let's look at n equal to two now. And these are kind of what are called quadratic equations. So let me look at first z squared is equal to five. All right. Now five is a real number, but real numbers are a subset of the complex numbers. And in this case, guys, don't you know? Don't go all scared on me, and just remember what your 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 basic mathematics. In this case, if z if z squared is equal to five, then z is equal to plus or minus the square root of five. That's it. That's all it is. Okay. So if on the right hand side you have a real number, and on the left hand side you've got z squared, then it's the usual solution. It's plus or minus the square root of five. But if you notice here, guys, there are two solutions to z. Okay, and there have to be because in complex equations, the number of solutions you get corresponds to the highest power of z. So here we've got z squared is equal to five. So therefore, z must be plus or minus five. There must be two solutions. Things get a little bit more complicated. Look, look, now look. Let me put z squared equal to five i. Ooh, no. What does that mean? Now you could you you could do it this way. You could get do the same thing. Z is equal to plus or minus the square root of five i, which is plus or minus the square root of five by the square root of i. What's the square root of i? What is that? Yeah. So you get you, you know what is that? I, that's not something that's um, we like. Um, and you can multiply above and below by the square root of i because you still get the square root of i. Because so the square root of i is not something that that that's that, that, that that's allowed in the game. I is allowed the game, yes. Yeah, so that, that so but but the square root of i is not part of it's not it's not in the spirit of what we're trying to do. So whereas this looks like a solution, it's not really okay. So how do you how do you do this? How do you solve these kind of equations? Okay, when you, when it's complex on the right hand side. So when it's complex on the right hand side and you've got z squared. Here's what you do. You get you write the number in polar form. Okay? So if you look at 5i, so what do you need to remember in polar form? This is a Cartesian form because it's a number plus a number times i. So we want to write this in polar form. So here's what you do. So you draw a little argon diagram. So here's the real part, and here's the imaginary part. And we know we've got one, two, three, four, five. This is the point here. So this is 5i. So this is 5 here. This angle here is pi over 2. Agreed? So in this case, this is a very special angle. You don't have to do any kind of tan or any of this nonsense because it's a right angle with the positive direction of the real axis. The angle here is pi over 2. So what you do is you write 5i as the modulus of 5i. What's the distance here? It's 5 exponential i pi over 2. Now you said, oh, what, what, what are we doing here? That's, that's why are we doing this? This is how you solve complex equations. You take what's on the right hand side and you rewrite in polar form. The one exception, of course, is when you've got a real number on the right hand side and you've got z squared, then it's just plus or minus square root of five. That's fine because you get two solutions automatically. You don't have to do this messing around at all. Okay, now guys, here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. You then also write rewrite that as exponential i pi over 2 plus 2n pi. Because you can add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi from the argument and still have the same argument. So this is pi over 2. If I do one more res revolution, I get back to here. So that's still the same argument. So we can add 2n pi to any argument and still have the same argument. Okay. So, so, so it's a two-step process. You take the right-hand side, you write it in polar form, and then you change the argument to the argument plus 2n pi. And why do you do this? Because you get the right answer. That's the recipe. Now, how often do you have to do this in engineering studies? Very rarely. And so this is kind of a mathsy thing, really. But it's an, it's an interesting mathsy thing. Okay, so there's, there's something, I don't know, very profound here or something very interesting here that's going on that I don't understand but that but that, that's what you do all right now boys and girls what you do next well we've got z squared equal to this mess so therefore then z you take the square root of both sides so it's 5 
exponential i pi over 2 plus 2n pi to the power of a half. Okay, as we do now, as we did up here with the real number, essentially. So we, we, we took the square root of both sides. We take the square root of z squared, you get z. Take the square root of the right-hand side, this is what you get. So if you look on the right-hand side now, guys, you'll see that this, it's 5 multiplied by the exponential. So we can bring the half into each of these terms here. So if I can walk to the next, the next line here. So what you get then is 5 to the power of a half exponential i pi over 2 plus 2n pi to the power of a half. So that's just the square root of 5. Now, if you've got an exponential to a power, you just bring the power inside and multiply each of the terms here. So you get exponential i. Pi over 2 by a half is pi over 4 plus n pi. Okay? Right. Now, n is any integer. Okay? We know that there are two solutions for z because it's z squared. So what we take, we can take any integers we like here when we get our solutions, any two integers. So we're going to take n equal to 0 and n equal to 1, and that's it. So if I do that here, folks, because n equal to 0, I get z equal to root 5 exponential i pi over 4. Okay? And if you want to, you could write that as root 5 into cos pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. If you want to, you can do that. And cos pi over 4 and sine pi over 4 is root 2. It's 1 over root 2. If you want to do that, and you can leave the root 5 in there if you want to, if, but you don't have to. You can leave it like that. That's fine. That's that's what the solution is. That's the polar form of the solution. This is the Cartesian form of the solution. They're the same. They're equivalent. So n equal to 0 is one solution. n equal to 1 is the other solution. So you get exponential uh, pi plus whatever is 5 pi over 4. And you can write that then as root 5. If you want to, you don't have to. Cos 5 pi over 4 plus i sine pi, 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 pi over 4. And you can find out what they are if you want to, but I'm not going to go into it. Okay? Now, you could say, well, what about any other solutions? If I took n equal to 2, if you take n equal to 2, you get back to this solution. n equal to 3, you get this solution. So you keep getting the same solution. I know you just have to trust me on this, but you do. And why am I just taking n equal to 0 and n equal to 1? Because I know there are two solutions. Because that's the... Some brilliant mathematician in the past has shown that the number of solutions to a complex equation is the highest power of z. In this case, we've got z squared, so we know there are two solutions. So I can take any two values for n I like. And so the usual ones that people take are n equal to 0 and n equal to 1. But if you pick n equal to 5 and n equal to 66, that's fine as well. Yeah? So you can pick any two solutions, any two numbers. Well, make one odd, one even. Uh, but you'll always get the same solution. So take n equal to 0, n equal to 1. We don't do n equal to 2 because we have our two solutions. Okay? And actually, guys, there's a pictorial representation for this, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're into this. Um, the, the, if you, if you, if you, uh, the two solutions like this now are, um, if I do a little argon diagram of my two solutions, this one here is root 5 over root 2. It's here, that's one solution, and the other solution is actually down here. So this is kind of a mirror image. And the distance here is um, root 5. And the angle here is pi over 4, because that's what it is. So there's, there's always a kind of a geometrical interpretation of the two solutions. If you want to, that's just arsenal. This is the arsenal. Right, the first solution is up here. It's pi over 4 argument, and it's root 5 here. So the other solution, it's a symmetric thing. It must be down here. Okay? This is an out that the argument here is 5 pi over 4, and this is root 5 here between here and here. But that's that's just arsenal. The important bit here is that's one solution, that's the other solution. Okay. So um, we've done quadratic equations now. Now, as I say, guys, don't get too hung up on this. This is not essential part of your engineering maths, really. There is just a lot of arsing around here, but um it's kind of an interesting kind of arsing around, really. You know? it's, 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 just, it's just messing about with complex numbers, and you're getting some very, very interesting results. And especially this kind of geometric interpretation, there's something very deep here that I don't understand, really, what's going on. But it's, it's very, very nice. Okay. 
Now, let's talk about cubic equations. I think we're going to stop here. Okay, so. Cubic equations, folks, the most basic example of a cubic equation is something of this form, z cubed equal to one. All right. Now, because you've got a cubed here, a power three here, there are three solutions to this. One obvious solution, which is z equal to one. That's one solution, because one by one by one gives you one. So z equal to one. What are the other two solutions? Now, if you contrast this, now this is kind of a tangent. <laughs> this, 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 this is just something that I want you to be aware of. If, if you remember for in the real case, if x cubed is equal to one, x is equal to one is the only solution. So if x is a real number, then x equal to one is the only solution. And, um, but if, z, if you say that z is a complex number, then there are three solutions. So there's a big, big difference between real variables and complex variables, especially when you're talking about equations. So now here, look guys, we've got z cubed is equal to one. And uh, I know that one solution is z is equal to one. Um, what are the other two? All right. Again, what you do, let's go back to the, the, the recipe that I was taught here for, for, for this one here. Remember what the recipe was. We changed the right-hand side to its polar form, and we add 2n pi to the argument, and then we took, the, we took the square root or whatever root we have to take. All right? We're going to do the same here. So z cubed is equal to 1. I need the polar form of 1. So the polar form of 1, if you think about it, here it is. Here's, here's, here's 1. Okay? This is the real part. This is the imaginary part. So this, you know, this, so um, of the complex number, uh, one is here. The argument here is zero, and the modulus is one. Okay, so z is equal to one times exponential i zero. Okay, because the argument is zero. But then we, what we realized though, we can write that as one times exponential i zero plus two n pi because we can always add two n pi to an argument and still have the same argument. And now one times that is the same as exponential. So therefore, what we're getting now is we're getting z is equal to exponential i and zero plus two n pi. So. Okay, so this is a bit strange what we're doing here, but what we're doing here is we're replacing the right hand side by its polar form. We're adding two n pi to the argument. And then we're, uh, and that's it. And now what we have to do then is we want to get, we're going to take, um, we want z cubed, we know that z cubed is equal to this. We want to get z, so we take the cube root of both sides. So if I do that, then I'd get z is equal to exponential i 2n pi to the power of 1 over 3. And so when I bring the, the power inside, I get exponential i 2n pi over 3. Okay, so um, that's what you do. So and the reason why I, I, I took the cube root is because we want to get z, right? We got z cubed is equal to this. So therefore z then means you take the cube root of both sides and you get this, 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 ex, this expression here. Now we have three solutions, folks, because we, 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 we started with a z cubed. So we take n equal to zero. And when you take n equal to zero here, guys, you get z equal to exponential when zero, i zero, that's exponential zero is equal to one. That's kind of a trivial solution. Let's take n equal to 1. You get exponential i. When I put n equal to 1 there, I get 2 pi over 3. And when I put n equal to 2, I get exponential i 4 pi over 3. And if you want to, you can write this as cos 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. And you can write this as cos 4 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 pi over 3, if you want to, but you don't have to. There's a geometrical interpretation of the three solutions in the, in, in the, in the using an argon diagram. This is your one solution here. 
and the other solution then is that it, it divides the, the, the complex plane into three parts. The arguments here are all going to be equal. So this argument here is the same as this, this is the same as this. Um, this distance here is one, this distance here is one, this distance here is one. So you have three solutions you can represent geometrically like this. This is one solution, this is one solution, this is one solution. So there is a kind of a nice geometrical interpretation of what three, these three solutions are. These three things, they're so important in mathematics, that mathematicians love this. These three solutions have their own name. These are called the cubed roots of unity. All right, so this collection of numbers, one, exponential i, two pi over three, and exponential i, four pi over three, are called cubed roots of unity. And they even have their own notation, but we're not gonna do that because people love this because it's so different from what happens in the real case, which I crossed out. If X is a real number, there's only one solution, but if Z is a complex number, there are three solutions. And that's what people love about complex numbers. You have as many solutions as the highest power of Z. Now you can do that, you can ask around with this guys again, you know, you can, you can do, do another example, like Z cubed is equal to eight I or something like that. What, what, what how would you, Solve for z. You represent this as a um, get the polar form of this. Add two n pi to the argument, and then take the cube roots. Exactly the same way as we did here. Now, again, is this essential to your engineering education? Probably not. You don't have to do this that often, and it's more of a kind of a mathematical kind of nicety here. I think that's what I'm trying to do, because solving equations is very important in engineering. And um, the fact that I think this is just the fact that in complex, if you have, if your numbers are complex, you have always the same number of solutions as the highest power. And that's kind of, I think that's fascinating. I think that's what kind of fascinates mathematicians a lot, that, that, that that's the case. Okay. All right. So that's complex equations. Now, the last thing I want to talk about are complex inequalities. You know, complex inequalities have a special form and um, because when you think about it, you can't order a complex number. You can't say one complex number is less than the other one. Um, it doesn't make sense. Well, look, you can say for real numbers, right? Let's look at real numbers. Can you ask, is four less than six? Yeah, it is, all right, why? Because if you drew a point, you know, if you drew the where the points, this is zero, two, three, four, five, six. Here's four, here's six. This point here is closer to the origin than this point, so therefore it's less than. So you can, that makes sense. But with complex numbers, no, I could be wrong here, but I don't think you can do this. Is one plus two i less than three minus four i? How would you do that? How would you begin to do it? You could maybe start talking about modulus and arguments, but I don't think there's any consistent way to do it. So you can't talk about complex numbers, one complex number being smaller than another one. I don't think. I can't think of a single of, of a way of make of being consistently of being logically consistent about this. Whereas with real numbers, you can. Four less than six, that makes sense because four is closer to zero than six. So therefore we can say four is less than six. That's true. But if you've got two complex numbers, it's I can't think of a way of being logically consistent so that you can definitively say that one complex number is less than another, okay? But you will see this though, when you start talking about the modulus of complex numbers. And so what I want to talk about then is uh, I want to, and this is bizarrely enough what we're going to be talking about now next is important for especially important for the electronic engineers amongst you because you're special okay so you will be seeing this when you start talking about stability of some electronic systems or electrical systems okay so what i want to just do i just want to do an example and show you how easy it is and then we might stop here and then uh yeah okay so i'm just going to do an example in the book and here it is What region of the complex plane is described by? Let's go to the example in the book. Mod Z minus one. Is a 
that's not true. Okay. Now, this does make sense, folks, because um, the modulus of a complex number is always a real number. And so therefore you can have one real number less than another one. So that's, that's good, okay? Now, whenever you have a modulus and you, you've got either an equality or an inequality, there's a recipe that you follow. And I'm just gonna show you what the recipe is. The way you do it always is you replace Z by X plus IY. Now, here's the difference between what we've been doing up to now and what we're going to do now. Here, when we're talking about cubic equations, we change the, the whatever on the right hand side into its polar form. Here we use exclusively use the Cartesian form. Okay, no, well that's not always true actually. Not that I've said it, but that's what I want. That's the recipe I want you to follow. Okay, so what you do is you just replace z by x plus i y, and see then what region you get in the x y plane. Okay, so let me just show you what what I mean. Okay. No. On the left hand side, we have mod of z minus 1. So, as I said, guys, what I want you to do is I want you to replace x plus iy, so we get the mod then of x minus i1 minus 1. So, you get z equal to x minus um, x, z is equal to x plus iy. We don't know what z is, so let's look. Its general Cartesian form is of this form. That's, this is a real number, and this is the real part. So let's add the real parts and the imaginary parts. So you get the mod of x minus 1 brackets plus i, y. So all I've done there, folks, is I've combined the real parts and the imaginary parts. Okay? Now, if you look at um, mod z minus 1, sorry, guys, sorry. And if you want, sorry, um, the mod of z minus 1 plus i then is, remember what this is, it's the square root of x minus 1 squared plus y squared. That's what it is. Okay, so the modulus of a, of a complex number in its Cartesian form is the square root of the real part squared plus imaginary part squared. Now, I want, so therefore what I have then is I have the square root of x minus 1 is squared plus y squared. Is that than 4? Is less than, what did I start? Is less than 2? Okay. Now, in mathematics, we hate square roots. So what we do is we square both sides. X minus one is square root. Y square is less than four. Okay. So what does this describe? Well, this describes, if you look at, um, instead of an inequality, we have an equal sign here. Just, just bear with me now. I know we're talking about less than, but let's just look at what the situation of x minus one to be squared plus y squared is equal to four, what that looks like. This is a circle, radius two, because you take the square root of the, what's on the right side, center one, zero. So maybe that's not obvious, but that's what, that's what it is. If, if, if this was just x squared plus y squared, it would be a circle of radius two centered at the origin. But here we've got x minus one. So it's, it's the center of this one, then the center, the, the coordinate of the y point is zero and the coordinate of the x point is one. Because if I set x minus one equals zero, I get x equal to one. So what this is, so it's one, zero, and the radius is two. And it's, and it's, it's, it's up here, and it's up here, and it's up here, and it's up here. So, it's up here. so you get that circle there. And then remember what we have is we've got x squared minus one plus y squared is less than four. This circle here is equal to four and less than four folks then is the area inside. Okay. Now this happens a bit, as I say, in the analysis of electronic systems. Okay, now it's not crucial, and but the recipe is very important. The recipe is replace z by x plus i y. Okay, get the modulus then of what you of what you get. Which is the square root here, and then take the square and then square both sides to get rid of the square root. All right, let me just do an example, another example where you've got modulus and equality now. Okay, so here we have an inequality. This is called a complex inequality. Well, it's not really because 
it's a modulus inequality really, which makes sense because the modulus of a complex number is a real number, but it's exactly the same folks. So if you have a modulus of a complex number and you either have an inequality or an equality, you always do the same thing. Replace Z by X plus I Y, get the modulus and then square to get rid of the square root. Let me just do one example in the book. Okay. What is the region described by? And here it is. Now, guys, I'm going to do it here. Just an example book. What z minus one is equal to a half z minus one. Okay. Now, in this case, this is different from the previous example, but we do have modulus. We have modulus in both cases now, but that's that's okay. So, whenever you have a modulus of a complex number, the very first thing you do, guys, is you set z equal to x plus i y. So let's do look at the left hand side first. You have the modulus of x plus i y minus one, which is the modulus of x minus one plus i y, which is the square root of x minus 1 to be squared plus y squared, by definition. That's what the modulus is of the Cartesian form. Let's look at the right-hand side. We have a half the mod of x minus y, which is a half the modulus of x plus i into y minus 1. So in this case, on the right-hand side, we combine the imaginary parts. So you get i times y minus 1. And when you get the, the modulus of that, then you get the square root of x squared plus y minus 1 to be squared. All right. So whenever you have the modulus of a complex number and you're interested in the, the, the region or the, the, the um, described by the modulus either equation or inequality, it's exactly the same. All right, so you, you, you do that. Now, we know that this is equal to this. We have a square root here and square root here, so we're going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. So you, on the left-hand side, then you have x minus 1 to be squared plus y squared is equal to. Um, so that's that squared. If I square the right-hand side, I have a half here squared, which is a quarter, into squaring that is x squared plus y minus 1 to be squared. So if I'm being a 4 over here, guys, I get 4 into x minus 1 to be squared plus y squared is equal, plus 4y squared, right, is equal to x squared plus, and I multiply that out, I get y squared minus 2y plus 1. And when I multiply that out, then I get, therefore, 4x squared, stay with this, 4x squared um, minus 4, no, plus 4, minus 8x plus 4y squared, is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus 1. And then you bring all the, x term, the, the terms together, so you get 3x squared, which is this term and this term. And you get the y squared here, and you've got y squared here plus 3y squared, which is this term here. Okay. And minus 8x plus 2y. And you bring it here plus 3 is equal to 0. No, I'm not going to go into what that is, or describe what that is, but that's a region in the xy plane. Because you, your x squared term and your y squared term are the same, it's a circle. I'm not going to go into what it, it's done in the book as an example, but I don't, I'm not interested in it. The region in the xy plane that this equation describes by this thing here is this equation here. And that's all the, the, it's the equation that I'm interested in. In this case, it's actually, it is a circle because the, the number multiplying the x squared and the number multiplying the y squared is the same. I'm not going to go into what type of circle it is. don't care. And so you can just say it's a circle. And you don't even have to say that. Just say the region described by this inequality is this. That's fine. All I want you to do is just follow the recipe. Okay? So that's when you're talking about inequalities and equalities involving the modulus of an unknown complex number, right? It's different from what we did at the beginning, which was solving complex equations. 
In that case, we, we transform the right-hand side into its polar form. Here, we let the unknown part of Z, uh, the, the unknown Z be X plus I, Y, and find out what X and Y is from um, the, either the equation or the inequality. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, next, tomorrow, what I'll do is I'm gonna go back over and look at maybe last year's exam uh, involving the complex numbers and see what we, what, what we can do there. And um, last year's and maybe the repeat exam as well and go back and look at those in, questions are these those questions and show you how easy they are okay all right guys go out there enjoy the sunshine but come back in and do this all right and um if anybody's listening out there because i'm not sure if you are i'm talking to myself but um that's um yeah so if you tune in tomorrow then i'm just going to do a few of the questions and um hopefully set you up for the exam all right thanks guys bye